Wow! Hello everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here. So let's go tractor hunting. No, wait, that doesn't work for what we're after today. Let's go zero turn hunting. Um, so this got posted up on Craigslist. I just happened to sit down, have a cup of coffee. For the giggles of it, I checked Craigslist, which ironically, I usually never do. Um, so this got posted up last night. 14 hours ago, guy says, this is my address. You can show up after 9 o'clock. It is 8.40 right now. His address is supposedly 18 minutes away, so we're going to see if we can be the one to show up at 9 o'clock for this thing. $200, come get it off my lawn. So this guy has a YouTube channel called Hot and Cold, and he works on a bunch of Priuses here. And he actually just grabbed one of these Priuses in order to haul the zero turn from there out to here. Can you tell that the hydros are not happy? Um, so we're going to get it loaded up. I've got these ramps here because stuff tends to skid on wooden planks versus those where it bites in. I'll do the best I can to talk over the wind here. We've got a thunderstorm coming in soon, but I want to see what's going on with this thing. I know you guys do too. So, I have said it for years, never, ever, ever spend more than you can see yourself being able to liquidate something for. So, I spent 200 bucks. In the pictures, I could clearly see that the Kohler was in okay condition. So, I know that I've got most likely a coil, a starter, other parts I can pull off of there. So there's about $50 worth of parts there. I know that I've got a set of tires here that look as if they're brand new. They even have the stubble still on them. So those are 18 8 8.58s, which ironically are something I was debating buying for another build anyway. So there's those. The deck, I could see from the pictures, did not have any rust-out spots right in here. Although, the ad claims that he had deck work done. But whatever he had done for deck work must not have included blades. Because that's missing half of its blade. And that's missing half of its blade. But the deck is in good condition. It's got a couple of spots where you can definitely tell it's been hit a few times. Fuzz definitely approves of the seat. And the seat is one of those things that people underestimate the value of. Up here in Maine where everything weather cracks and rots out, a seat like that that you can throw onto a large Cub Cadet or something, that in itself is worth 50 bucks right there. So if we've got about somewhere about with rims in order to bolt on with the tires with high grade tubes in them already, we got like 160 in the tires. We've got another $70 worth of parts we know are right there as far as the motor is concerned. We got a seat that adds $50 worth of value to anything we throw it on. So immediately, at 200 bucks, I know I can liquidate 250 out of it just from looking at it. And the deck being in the condition that it's in, that'll easily sell too. So the guy added some more story once I was there. And the story goes like this. I was mowing along. I hit a spot. This side dug in. It dug all the way down to the axle. I gave up, I shut the machine down, it never started after that. So with that being the case, somebody convinced him that this no longer had any compression in it. Which seems a little weird if the story is that he shut the machine down himself. So that seems to have compression, which is the weird part. Now, if he tried to start it immediately after getting it stuck, some of these hydros have heat safety switches in them, so it could have been a safety switch that malfunctioned. 
Could have been an oil switch malfunctioning from being off Kitty Wampus if it was low in oil. But at this point, I'm going to sit on it. We're going to turn the key and see what it does. I don't expect it to start up, but boy, wouldn't that be funny if it did. Hey, Fuzz. Are you going to help? Alright, so... Well, one thing I can tell you is this is definitely made for somebody who is smaller. At six foot one, I really don't fit very well. I can't read anything on the counter. And it looks as if it's using this gas tank because that gas tank is disconnected. Gas is kind of fresh smelling. All right, so parking brake is down. I don't know if those... doesn't look like it matters where those are. That's in. Choke cable moves fine. That is almost stuck. There we go. What I don't like is that I feel like the machine is actually attempting to move right now and it shouldn't be. I could actually feel it attempting to pump forward. What we're going to do now is I'm going to get my big booster. We're going to put it on the battery so we can crank that battery, that thing for all it's worth. We're going to pull the carburetor top off. We're going to give it some bottle baby. And we're going to see if it'll fire after that once I disconnect the harness. And you guys probably want to see me do all of it. Alright, hopefully the wind doesn't end up blowing you guys off of this trailer. So, we're going to pull the throttle back, stuff some starter fluid in it. Now, I can see that some of the safeties on this have been bypassed. But the solenoid on the bottom of the motor still seems to have a cable connected to it. So I'm going to bet that it's still there. The other thing I noticed is that it has a fuse here that does not look as if it's in the happiest of days. So it's not blown, but it doesn't look very nice. So that says ready. And we've hooked up our push button. Let's see what we get out of this thing. Oh! Wow! That was a hell of a backfire. I don't know what that was, but... That almost knocked me off the trailer. me see here it almost does feel like it doesn't have any compression which is kind of strange well I can definitely smell the starter fluid coming out of there I'll try one more then maybe we'll take the valve cover off and see what's going on under the valves this time I'm going to stand off to the side instead of right next to the exhaust that nearly shot me off this thing. Alright, here we go. Well, we made the Hulk man mad. Well... I would say that it definitely does not have compression. But it also could be a couple of other things. So, I think what we'll do now is we'll get this top off to see what's going on under here. Uh, rip the spark plug out. 
and roll it over in order to see if there's actually anything going on inside here. Because obviously it's firing every once in a while, so I don't know. We'll take a look. A distinct lack of oil probably is not helping it very much. Now I'm sure right now I've probably got somebody out there on YouTube land that is screaming at their computer screen that I need to check, that I need to check the flywheel. And I won't argue with you. I agree that there's a good chance that it could be the flywheel key. Now, the reason why it is it could be the flywheel key is because of how it decided to do a ton of rotation and then backfire on me. But, one thing that I have figured out over the years is that the more often you can avoid taking the flywheel off, the more often that you don't manage to break magnets or any other stupid thing that might potentially cause you way more headache in the future. So we're going to not do the flywheel key unless we find that we actually have piston movement. Oh yeah, that's nice and adorable. So the other reason why I wanted to do this was to make sure right here where this comes around that this isn't grounding out somewhere. So there's our connection there. It's not grounding out anywhere. So. At this point, our next step is going to be to pull this spark plug wire, pull the spark plug, I brought one spark plug that should be good, yeah that was really loose, that wasn't even hardly in there. What's interesting is that that gasket there still is silver. Usually they get tarnished. So I hate to say it, but I'm betting this thing had a head gasket in the last year or so. Yeah, that's really wet. But... Let's see if we can at least get some firing out of it. And that way we know whether our coil is actually worth anything. So we'll connect up our Hulk man. And grab our punch button here. And find a spot that we can ground it out on. Now, stay away from the spark plug hole where we just put in starter fluid and try it oh yeah that's got really good spark so that's got good spark we don't need to bother with the second spark plug so at this point what we need to do is test and see if that piston is actually moving So that's tapping on the piston. If we rotate this, the piston is going down and coming back out. Yep. So for everybody that was screaming at me about checking the flywheel, guess what? I'm not gonna do it until after I check the valves are moving. Just to go and make you guys upset. That we've actually got anything going on in here.
And it's gonna be a long, I'm gonna have to pause that because there's a 10 millimeter stuffed inside there. I'm not gonna make you guys wait while I do that. They placed bolt out. One more to go. Pop this. Ah, there it goes. Yeah, that gasket's too new. It's been replaced at some point. Uh, oh, look at that. Sure, that helps matters. Well, that's interesting. It's not broken. I was expecting broken or bent, and it's not. But it is definitely not okay. Well, let's slide this back in. And I'll reach in and we'll hand rotate it and see if it actually moves at all. Unfortunately, I can't. There we go. So that should be right there. So it is moving. There's that. And then that should be that cycle there. So there's that. That is just insane amounts of loose there. I'm gonna tighten that up and see what happens. Maybe even actually take it all the way off and see if the bottom of it is just plain gone. I'm not sure. How about this? How about we tighten it up and we see if we can actually get it to kick over once, once it's tightened. How's that sound? Well, I hand tightened it in. I did not reef on it whatsoever. I just put it in to be hand tight. See it jiggles just like the other side should. So we'll give it some starter fluid. Put the choke on. And I'm going to use the push button from over here where it's safer, hopefully. That's not safer. Something's still not right. This motor officially just hit the engine swap point, which we're going to do real quick, but I just wanted to show you guys that that is a straight surface. And that is the rod that just came out. So I'm going to say that it is probably time to swap this motor. We're going to part it out for everything that we need. And in the far back, I've got a Cub Cadet that actually has either the same motor or a slightly bigger one. So we're going to swap that in and get this thing up and running with that. Donor engine running good. Got some mouth mess burning off. Now to rip it out of there and put it in there. I wanted to show you guys how these pulleys were underneath here because I don't see this very often. So this goes on there to make a stack with a one inch extension to put the clutch on. I thought that was interesting. You don't see that very often except for these really big clutches sometimes have that. So we've got all of that undone. We need to pull that one, the bolt there, the bolt there, and drop this clutch br um, bracket piece off and the motor should come out of here. 
Then we got to swap the wiring harness over on the other motor. Because part of the reason why this machine never ended up getting sold or anything was because the wiring harness was thoroughly sliced up by the previous owner. And as you can see, there's something got on the harness and rotted it away. So I've sliced off the leads for the harness on that motor there. And we're just going to go and wire it up to this with just a splice or two. Nothing too complicated. Ella, you being helpful? Meow. Hey, you look so enthusiastic, yet you deliberately traumatize everybody until they pick you up just to act like you didn't want to be picked up. Yeah, that's right. Walk away. Yeah. I see how you are. Anyways, so at this point, we got that out of there and pulled that. The muffler that was on there is shot. But we've got the muffler that came off of this that I'm going to see if I can pull this off of and then see if it will fit in here if I slice this off flat maybe. Now it wasn't a perfect fit just dropping in. We've got some work to do. As you can see if you saw earlier this is sitting significantly over to this side. And the reason for that is it had an oil adapter on it and that doesn't line up with this particular chassis and I really don't want to be slicing up the chassis to make this work. I'm going to see if I can undo this tomorrow and put the oil drain from that onto this in some form. But that's where we are now. Hopefully tomorrow we can get some more done on this. Right, John? Yes. You excited to try test driving it? Yes. Yes? I've never grown anything like this. At this point, we got our Cub Cadet motor in. It's actually a bigger motor than what was in here before. So, I don't know. The problem is, with the other one having a bent valve, there's a real good chance it could be a hydro pump locked up solid and killed it. So we'll see if it'll even start and go from there. Now we may have to go and hand do the choke, which is why I've got the engine top off. Well, that was promising. Although I tried to move backwards just then. I'm going to bet that the battery is bad. So we're going to go and stuff the booster on it. Go from there. Well, that's weird. Why did it only kick one? Well, let's see what happens if we manually hit the starter. I'm noticing the starter solenoid isn't exactly grounded very well. much choke I think. Yeah, I've got something in here making a ton of really mad at the world noises so something's not happy about the battery being half dead all 
All right, let's try this again. Safety still works. I think what's happening is this diversion is not working correctly. One of these diversion valves is set way shallower than the other one. Okay, let's try that. tires are pretty aggressive. Hi John, go ahead, try. Well, I meant for him to just turn around and come back, but apparently we're going to go play around on the yard. So as we talked about earlier in the video, the blades are utterly, totally beyond shot. I mean, 
that was three passes. They still need, yeah. The blades are just done. But I looked up a set of blades for this and all three of them together are only about 40 something dollars. So that's no big deal. We'll have blades on it. As you could hear when he shut it off, there was a little bit of a kick. So the carburetor needs a little bit of tuning. It could just be that the motor sat for nine months since the last time I was running it. So we'll let that run out, probably pull the uh, bowl and clean it up a little bit. But what do you think, John? Was that fun? Yes. Was that your first time ever mowing? Yes. Are you addicted to a zero turn now? Yes. Yeah, this is why we don't own one. <laughs> All right, guys. Say bye-bye, John.